Yuck Mala! Yuck Mala! Welcome back, my friends, to the Cult Film Showdown. I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu, and I am truly happy to be joined today by my good friends, and I have Nick Boxer. Greetings and salutations. I'm glad you could join me behind the bars. That's right. That's right. We are we are reform school girls today, so uh, ye us. <laughs> and <laughs> Jack Hall. Uh, hey, I got some yakamala crawling up my legs. One second. <laughs> off. Get it off. Get it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm careful there. Okay. And it spreads, and there's no cream for it. <laughs> Speaking of no cream for it, James Cotta. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad that I finally uh, was let out of uh, the reform school at uh, the tender age of 37. <laughs> That's for sure. Only 37. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm still younger than Wendy, Wendy O. Williams. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. Not uh, true. She just looked that way. No, she was that old. She was 37. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but yes, like... She was 37. Yeah. So, so this, this, um, well, there, there's some stuff to talk about here, but, uh, so we are... We are... look 65 is what we're all talking about. <laughs> yes. Good for a 65-year-old, but for a 65-year-old. <laughs> great shape, great shape, <laughs> but... Uh... So we are talking about reform school girls as we carry on our Sybil Danning sibilance season where all things Sybil Danning get mentioned. And really, this is barely Sybil Danning at all. This is this may be the shortest, um, smallest amount of Sybil Danning that we get in any one of the movies this season, I think. And now, Nick Boxer, please, please, reform well, school girls. Our hero, poor, poor little Jenny, runs afoul of the law and is sent just to reform school. She's sent to, I think it's called Penworth uh, uh, Reform School, where she immediately runs afoul of the lingerie-clad bullies and hijinks ensue, culminating in a tremendous prison riot and... Uh, like that. Um, there's a couple shower scenes, and uh, uh, Sybil Danning is the warning, although she's not there very much. The end. A cat gets squished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's not forget that a cat gets squished. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. It, that, yep. You should never, you never do that. You lose the audience. <laughs> oh. Kill an animal. They also shower. <laughs> they definitely shower. Oh, do they this ever? Is, uh, we, we were talking last time we gathered about the the similarities of do uh, the the challenge of doing uh, chain heat was the one we did in the last episode, and now uh, reform school, school girls doing these together was not the best. <laughs> no, <laughs> this it, it did not work um, out well at all. But uh, but watching these two close together, uh, Sybil Danning goes from uh, she's really there to show her uh, assets to basically showing no skin below the jawline in this film. Uh, she is uh, Ilsa, uh, queen of the SS in this movie. It is, it is a weird outfit for the warden. Uh, it is an incredibly militaristic war- outfit, but uh, yeah, she is, uh, she's of all the skin shown in this movie. It's uh, it's not simple. No. She, and she was there for branding. Yeah, it was it was really more just to have Sybil Danning's name, I think, appear in the movie, and and just like, well, you're not gonna work for this one role, so we're gonna put you somewhere, and Warden it is, and it just, I mean, it was just so small that it was, I mean, sure, <laughs> unfortunate, but yeah, it's a half hour in before she's introduced into the film. Uh, she's she's there, she's fairly present from then on, but it is a half hour before you see her. You hear her before you actually see you've her. You've seen lo- you've seen lots of everybody else in the movie by then. For, oh, sure. for sure, you've seen yeah more more than I've seen of some of my girlfriends. I've made <laughs> <laughs> uh, the lead Linda Carroll. Boy, is she a lovely woman. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, you also saw a lot of Wendy Williams. Man, oh man, that like there's so. <laughs> Yeah, Wendy Williams. <laughs> like, I my biggest question was, was this actually just 
Like, who went to Wendy O. Williams and said, so, we want you to be in this movie, plus we want you to do, like, most of the music for the movie, uh, you know, as the plasmatics and stuff like that, like, uh, like we're, we're just going to build a women in prison movie largely around you. And it was kind of like, really? That seems an odd choice. <laughs> well, here's the thing about Wendy O. Williams, and, and it's worth noting, she refused to wear any outfits that she didn't own for the, for the film. So if you're wondering what she wears around the house, that song and that. That doesn't that, surprise you say me that, at all. Like there's the one. They're all no. identical, but she wears a variety of songs mm-hmm. throughout this movie. Oh, and she, she owns them all. Uh, yes, no, there some is other, no some scene. Ladies. There's absolutely no scene where you're not seeing her full ass. <laughs> The, the dress code in this reform school is, oh uh, my is Lord, wow. one of the weirder things that we've found. So, I, because it, it's the middle of the day, it's not at night when the when our our uh, fresh meat arrives here into the uh, reform school, uh, and they're taken into a uh, a room with I think it's got about twenty some beds, twenty beds, something like that, twenty two. Um, and everyone's dressed in lingerie or uh, leather bikinis. Um. Yeah, and and I was just thinking, okay, so so for the most part, the the ex- expectation, I guess, is that this is whatever you had on under your clothes as you arrived, and and there was a few times where I was just like, so really, so you were wearing like a bustier and stockings when you arrived <laughs> at the reform the school, smallest underpants <laughs> in the world. And, yeah. Yes, I mean, okay, with Wendy o. Williams, I get it because she probably could have been arrested for her stage show when she was. <laughs> when she was actually 19 and <laughs> sent to the reform school. But, you know, like, and, yeah. and sure. So, I mean, she probably has history in a reform school. And now and now in this movie at 72 years old, like Phyllis Diller-esque age, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> so, still yeah, there. I mean, that's, that is worth saying. It's a reform school girls. Reform school. So these are apparently teenagers. I'm talking, we take Wendy O. Williams out of the mix. What do you think is still the average age? <laughs> still say it's about 25. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, not only, not only is it a, do they call it a reform school? Um, but in the opening scene where, where we're introduced, one of the opening scenes where we're introduced to our, our protagonists, they make it in abundantly clear that they're under 18. Um, because one of them talks about when I'm 18, this is what I'm going to do. And the other one talks about, well, it's this or being at a foster home. And then immediately have a nude scene. So <laughs> there's, oh, yeah. it's an odd tonality to this movie. It is a sleazy, <laughs> sleazy film. Oh, it, it yeah, is. I mean, know, even the good AIDS. girl costumes, the prison uniforms, are still mini skirts or <laughs> just shirts with like a belt, maybe. Because at no point can you not see a girl's underwear throughout this movie. <laughs> and and it's interesting because it, it is supposed to be a comedy in its own way. And I mean, it's, it's not funny in the least. Like there's no, there's no, like there's no well, real it does humor. Have those comedic tones. And then you get an absolute scene of brutality yeah. that completely undermines that. Yeah, I mean, because you have you have Edna, right, who is supposed to be the who is completely over the top. But the problem is, I think, is that is that while she may be playing it to some degree for laughs, like her over the top is always just straight up really freaking evil. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a weird thing because originally the role of the warden was a man, and Sybil Danny was supposed to play Edna. And then they figured she wasn't cast right for Edna, and they still wanted her in the film, so they switched the roles. That you would know? be such a different character. Oh, totally. And and I yeah. don't know that I would have enjoyed Sybil Danning anymore in that role, per se. Although, no. yeah, I mean, it's difficult to say, because she wouldn't have played it as over the top as the woman who played this one. Yeah, Sybil Danny could play off, I think, Squishing the Cat a whole lot easier and the lesbian scene would have been much more entertaining with when you know, Will Williams. Well, and it would have been believable, but, like, it would, but it, I, I, I think it would have been so much less entertaining than Wendy O'Williams and, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, 
That's that, true. That was something. You're like, what you know, I know, could actually see know this happening. From? You know, <laughs> what else do we know her from? Uh, Pat Pat asked, was her name? Uh, apparently, only the 70s through the 90s is all she was in. Yeah, it, it feels I'll, I'll like she's quick. she's always going to be this kind of woman. It feels like we yeah. definitely know her from other things. Uh, but I think the, rela- yeah, the relationship with those two. Do. Best known for starring Andy Warhol films. Oh wow! Oh that okay, I could see that. And those speaking of fucked up, but <laughs> <laughs> that'll that'll explain her understated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will explain it. Yeah, she was an incredible shrinking woman. She was in Homer and Eddie, Foul Play, uh, World's Greatest Lover, things like that. Yeah, which ways up, Duchess in the Dirt Water, blah, 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 blah. So, not exactly a a huge career, but one of those faces you'd know. A B movie icon, let's say. Because she's a face you don't know. Maybe a C movie icon, or maybe a D. (laughs) Are you saying she may have been in another film? Yes, she was in another film. <laughs> yes. yeah, you you narrowed it down to like three films. I don't know. I think I said five, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's okay. It, it doesn't matter. I think it, she it's like customer number one, but hey, <laughs> there's I yeah the 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 weirdest thing about this and and yeah we talked about it before is just the concept of doing it and chained heat in the same you know basically the same swoop. Of our of our eyeball watching uh, time and they just blend together so much. I mean, really, other than the what like the character in this one that that is kind of you know that has the the bear and of course takes the cat and is and really does not belong in the reform school. But like it's one of those. She's the only character that actually kind of separates the two to me. Because she wouldn't have fit in Chained Heat, but she, you know, she, it's like, she's here, you know, so. Because Chained Heat, there's no way that I could see anybody with a, with a stuffed bear or, or a, uh, or trying to adopt a kitty cat. I think, I think you mentioned, you mentioned, uh, Stan about it being a comedy. And that is one of the things I struggled with the whole film was yes. how, what like what is the tone supposed to be? Because it does have these wildly like it has these shocking scenes like the like the cat. It has these kind of out of place things like the oh come on uh, the cat like the, the cat actually like taking care of the kid, of a kitten inside this room. Um, but it, but there's other spots that like feel very campy like not just comedy but camp. Uh, like it really like, specifically the the courtroom scene at the beginning. Uh, which is basically just like a desk that's higher up than the person that's getting <laughs> yes um, that's <laughs> that's getting uh, uh, sentenced and uh, and and the judge the judge hold the judge in one of the best I think it's the best line in the movie the judge holds up a book and says I should throw this at you <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was brilliant uh, and then the 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 title card comes in on this very video. Um, uh, uh, super impose, uh, super um, title, and uh, so it, it it just has this kind of wide swing of what it's uh, of what it's doing. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, like the thoughts from uh, the rest of the panel here. <laughs> well, I had no, I, I mean, had a you're totally giant, right. you're, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, uh, you're totally right. Like there is a there is a. It's even worse if you know the fact that Linda Carroll's date of birth is listed as 1970 and this film came out in 1986 and there's no way that's a body double. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. That that's her actual date of birth, but that's what it lists. So you can do the math. Um, there's, there's an uncomfortable vibe on, uh, out of nowhere that just kind of shows up on this film all the time. Yeah. It's, it's one of those cases where at the beginning you truly believe that this is going to be a comedy. And and it's just like I think you settle into that that method, and then like you say that whole element just it's just like a dark pall kind of gets cast over it, and everything just goes from being funny shocking to mean shocking. Yeah, there's an ugliness here, isn't there? Yeah. But stepping on the cat was funny. 
<laughs> no, I don't care what anybody says. It's not, the cat it's, not the cat it's not Boondock Saints. It's not Boondock Saints shooting the cat funny, but it's still funny. <laughs> Like I think the other the other bit of camp is that when they're when they're being cleaned up when they arrive at the reform school they're sprayed down with DDT. Yeah, it's yes, exactly yeah, labeled yeah. as DDT. Yeah. <laughs> so again, there's like is it? I, I wrote down in my notes. Is that a gag? Like is that I like I I don't know if you didn't know what DDT was <laughs> or if it's a joke. I, I I don't quite get what's happening there. It's, yeah, it's but that's the, that's the thing though, right? Like there are these moments where, and I, and I think even, even at the very end, it's supposed to be a comedy. Like at the beginning and oh, at yeah. the end, it's a comedy. And everything in the middle is horrible. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the end is absolutely so over the top and so. Yes. And, and that where Pat Ash, the character Edna dies and everything and her behavior at the end is so clearly trying to be funny. But yeah, it's it's a really it's a strange, strange, strange film. Um, and not third easy prisoner to watch. Movie by, the third prisoner film movie by the by the director and the only one he likes. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, there's so much wrong. There's <laughs> like, the jungle did do it for him. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to unpack something like that is is just like oh. Uh... I think my so brain. What did this broken. film teach you, other than the fact that, again, hairspray easy to get in reform school? <laughs> uh, there is no age restriction on reform school. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's what I learned. Yeah. Um, I I learned that uh, I learned that the 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 old uh idea of what age range an actress can play uh has changed over the years um, <laughs> we, we are, i think we grew up, we grew up with the idea that uh Beverly eh, that Beverly Hills 90210 was stretching it to have like 25 year olds in high school but uh apparently they were just uh, of a time <laughs> all of the, all of the, uh, Luke Perry was way younger than Wendy Williams was in this uh <laughs> yeah, I learned that well, if you're yeah. going to report someone, you should if you're going to report someone to uh, to a governing body, you should tell them over and over before actually doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the, uh, it the one of the one of the heroes of this story is uh, is the officious um, reform school overseer therapist um, who's uh, <laughs> who who threatens. Uh, no, who threatens no fewer than three times uh, in a half hour of this movie to report the uh, reform school and report reports of landing uh, before actually doing so. <laughs> well, that role of interest, by the way, was supposed to be Mary Warrenoff. She was playing it too hard, so they had to get somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> she would have been amazing if I knew who that was. You know, you have to know who that I, was. I'm sure I would. I, I, well, I probably know where to see her. Uh, oh, what you, totally. what you learn, Jack? We never hear what you learn. You never hear what I learned? Yes, you do. I, it, says, it had to do with the, the hairspray. Oh, the hairspray. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I learned. You know, I just, hairspray, you know, it's, 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 it's easy to get. That and uh, that and uh, lesbian sex is uh, hot. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you, this it, was it. This that taught you that? No. Because <laughs> 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 it's just like wow. It, it took a long time for you to get there. <laughs> I I also learned that uh, that uh, my my kitten is uh, a lot more work than uh, the average kitten. Boy, oh boy, the... yes. That, that, <laughs> if that was the average kitten, then that kitten was yeah. super easy. Just just put it in a box for a while, yeah. and it's fine. Just put it in a box. Don't worry. It's not going to make – it's not going to meow it yeah, ever. Yeah, it's not going to meow. It doesn't meow ever. It doesn't need a litter box. And it doesn't move uh, when you sleep. It doesn't move at all. What the hell is it? Did they show us? Uh, I feel like they – Fed it like like just milk or something. It's no, no, like they that. did they did feed it, and and uh, and I was just like looking at the food and then comparing that to the food that they normally got to eat, which was like <laughs> bread and water. And I'm like, well, where did you get the food to feed the cat? And and if so, why are you not feeding yourself that food? 
I I think, guys, 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 if this is your takeaways, maybe we should skip to scoring. That's what I was about to say. Is that <laughs> we're sitting here and, and yes. talking about this movie. We're talking more about the kitten than the pussy. And <laughs> that All right. Seem right. In our search for the ultimate B movie, we rate each film in five categories, none of which are objective quality. The first category is called Schlock Appeal, and we start with Stan. Well, last episode, Nick gave me a hard time because I decided to go a little bit low on Shane Teat. Well, in this case, it's this is one of those weird cases where it's like I cannot necessarily enjoy watching the movie, but recognize the pure insanity of the way that they put it together. So in I am going with a nine. Okay, I'm going to give you a hard time for going high this time. <laughs> Because, you know what, this came out really late in the cycle of these things. I mean, I can't think of another women in prison movie uh, after 1986 until it became really campy and stuff to do stuff in the mid-90s. Um, I And the whole camp tone of this movie is off. I don't think it really knows wh- what it wants to be. It doesn't... It, it wants to make fun of schlock or it wants to be schlock. It just doesn't have that really like feel of schlock. It it wants to make fun of it. I think so I can only go with a seven. I can list so many. There's there's, I I, I think 1986 is right at the height of this. I think, I don't think it's quite dying off yet, but I will, uh, I will, at least I didn't think it was, but I will to you, Nick, uh, I will defer to your superior knowledge of prison and the well fails. <laughs> <laughs> so if you say that it's I'm dying off, that's interesting. Right now. Pardon me? I'm looking up a list of films right now because I don't know for <laughs> sure. It is one of the wonderful things about the Internet is that uh, list of women in prison films is on a Wikipedia somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Easy, in easy. fact, including the history. That's why I looked up earlier in the last episode. <laughs> Look, uh, I, I think that I'm directly comparing it to the last film. And the last film had a serious tone the whole way through, except for John Vernon, who was in a different film. And <laughs> who was in this, this one, film, oddly enough? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was in this film, or at least a. But this one um, is it, it's even schlockier because it's all over the map to me. Yes, so I, if I give the last one a seven. I give this one an eight because I think that it's even more over the top in in, in certain elements. Uh, I think uh, I think that the, them being in uh, lingerie for the whole film just uh, gives it that extra bump for me because <laughs> <laughs> there's there's no screenshot from this movie that's going to be anything but schlock. Uh, nine that's out of ten true. for me, and also the. The, uh, the so again the costuming of Sybil Danning as uh, as the SS officer. Oh my lord! With the school. with the like <laughs> Warden Sutter with the big S on the belt buckle, I was just like, oh, that's tremendous! Wow. <laughs> uh, more heart than budget. Uh, I didn't see a budget. I don't know if you. Did, I didn't uh, see a budget either. I can assume it's got to be less than the nine hundred thousand of the last film. Oh, I, I sure hope so. Because um, yeah, and in this case, whatever they spent was too much. <laughs> you know, there's, there's this other. I I can't explain this one. Maybe they spent it all on Wendy O. Williams just so that they could get uh, they could get plasmatics music in it as well. Um, I'm gonna give and it. And the, the the soundtrack for this is wacky. It it is wacky. I mean I mean. And and I love the fact so the very last song that plays over the credits is actually written by Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. So it's, just, right. it's like <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but, but yeah, still only a four for me. Sorry, I was still looking for my list. Uh we uh, more heart than budget? Uh, more heart than budget, yeah. Um yeah, they they did what they could with the budget, but what did they do really? Um Yeah, five. I I I just didn't feel anyone really wanted to be here other than Wendy O. Williams. And I didn't know if she knew where she was. <laughs> <laughs> she's quite the character, isn't she? Um, I mean, in this movie and in real life, I mean, she's essentially playing herself. I think, um, yeah, more heart than budget. I mean, I feel like it's uh, you know, like I say, 
the director made two previous women in prison films and didn't like them. And this was one he liked. This is what, this is him. This is him fulfilling his artistic vision. <laughs> so if you look at yeah. it from that point of view, uh, I'll give it a six out of 10. He finally fulfilled his artistic vision of what a prison and women movie should be. I, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to go with a seven on this. Uh, I think, I think simpler, but I think, uh, I, I think there's such a tonal weirdness in this movie that uh, that, that I think that whatever film each of them thought they were in, they were really bringing in. <laughs> but they didn't necessarily all think they were making the same movie. Uh, what the fuck moments? Well, what the fuck moments? See, the unlike the last movie, this one actually does provide us with some what the fuck moments. I mean, uh, like, I mean, we've talked about it a few times, but like the the outfits that they wear off the top, that is so insanely what the fuck when you walk in and it's just like, here's the here we go into the into the lingerie store. Um and and even more so than last time, like everybody has their nails done, everybody has their hair done, everybody has their makeup done. I mean, I don't know who you're looking good for other than the fact that apparently in women's prisons everybody's supposed to be a lesbian anyway. <laughs> but um and then and then really the like it's it's kind of like the beginning and it's kind of like the end. The DDT thing is huge, but the ending as a whole is so enormously what the fuck. I mean, you talk about like they go and they're calling out Edna because she's cruel and they have to and they have to call her out and then Edna has the shotgun and it's just like the other guards won't shoot but then Edna starts shooting and it's magical because she can only hit shoulders <laughs> like of all the people that she hits she always just hits them in a shoulder it is the craziest yeah. thing I was thinking this entire that entire scene is you know those shotgun blasts really sting. Yes, <laughs> yes they do. <laughs> and they should, should grab the rock salt shotgun by accident. <laughs> yeah, and the thing, but you know, she also managed to grab the shotgun that never runs out of bullets, which is also very yeah. a good, very much a good thing. <laughs> she decides to climb to the top of the tower. And then when they set it on fire, her reaction is actually not panic. It's it's just like, ah, ha, ha, I'm still going to shoot you. <laughs> and it was just so it was. It's it's really ridiculous in these points. I mean, squishing the cat is one thing, but I mean, I expected it when it ca- happened, so I can't really class it as that. Of course, Warden Sutter's big S belt buckle is is what the fuck. But um, so I'll give this one a seven. I'm going with the seven uh, as well, but I'm I'm going with the same scene. But Wendy o, Wendy o. Williams' actions in that end of prison scene, mm. I have no idea what she's doing because I kind of get that she wants to run the bus into the tower to kill Edna and catch everything on fire because there's a transformer under it, but. Why would anyone in their underwear, leather other underwear granted, break into the bus, rev it up to the maximum uh, speed heading towards this thing, then break the front window, climb out the front window, pose on the top of the bus in a triumphant manner, and then jump off at no time securing the gas pedal that we can see? The pose on the top was mad. What? Was wow. Yeah. Why would you not just jump out of the bus the same way you got in? <laughs> I mean, it was cool. I just didn't get any of the motiv- motivation. And being <laughs> naked, you'd think you would want to avoid the broken glass. <laughs> no matter how cool you thought you might look standing on top of the bus. It's not a bad thing. I am just saying it didn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense. Um, yeah. You had a seven on this as well, both of you? Yeah. Uh, I think that's my score, too. I mean, you guys have laced up. Uh, you know, one, we didn't mention the subplot that occurred uh, very quickly, the, the love romance subplot. 
I just found that whole thing WTF. There's this guy who's who's uh, comes in and out of the prison with, I guess, supplies or something like that. And he's just he's just sitting there for no reason watching the women work, even though it would have nothing to do with his job uh, in his in his, you know, bus, his school bus or van or whatever the hell it is. Truck, I guess it is. So in this truck. So he's sitting there the whole time just eyeing the women like, which one can I bone and taking off his shirt and acting all sexy. And he's like the most ugliest dude ever. So, you know, they finally end up uh, boning to Linda Carroll's character. And then and then he turns her in when she thinks she's going to help him escape. And I'm like, at what point in time, what did he give you as a as a sign that he was a good person? <laughs> like they, you could at all trust this guy. Like he's been a scumbag the whole way in his all his behavior and everything, and I'm like, it's just it's just such a short little little thing just thrown in the middle, just like they need to extend the plot. Um, I got a seven on this. I, I my what the fucks are entirely based around what this character's up to. <laughs> so uh, he is it's it's a it's a work truck that he has, um, and he is the guy that uh, that. Um, He's the contact for where they go do their uh, their hard labor. Um, so he picks up the women and takes them out to this field. Um, the field. Oh, is that why he's out there? Yeah, that's, that's why right. he's out there. He, it's his it's his truck that's in the that's in they the did scene. Explain and then, that. Uh, yeah. Oh, the, okay. Uh, now, I, my my take on that bit that you were talking about, Jack, is that she thinks she's manipulating him, and he's done this a hundred times. Yeah, uh, this is just his shtick. And then he he tells them he's going to get them out. He gets what he wants from them. And then he just turns them into the driver when he's leaving <laughs> and everyone looks good. Um, so I, I called him discount Patrick Swayze. I thought that was his, uh, that was That's his a good way uh, to put it. <laughs> so, I would I would suggest a deletion bin part of Patrick Swayze. <laughs> He might be might be discount Don Swayze. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but but the what the fuck for this for me in this section is, is that these women are put on hard labor. There's like a, a dozen or twenty of them out there. They're standing in a line. Uh, each one has a hoe, and each one is chopping at the ground with the hoe oh, without man. ever doing anything else. <laughs> like it's not a single one of them has ever been in a garden, let alone done labor. No, no. <laughs> They had no and, idea how to use that hoe, ironically. <laughs> well, and, and I'm and not we, sure what the purpose was. Later, when we turn return to this field later, it looks exactly the same as it <laughs> yeah. does. In the scene. Well, not only that, it's like, why are you using the hoe? What what is the purpose? When you mention it, it's like you're not going to plant something there. Clearly, nothing can. It's like desert. <laughs> Nothing's going to grow there. <laughs> it has like it has this like twenty. 20 foot uh, stretch of uh, of tilled ground that they're not next to um, <laughs> the, the, to make it they're like what is it what would make it look like a field well if we did this I guess <laughs> that would look like they're working in the field <laughs> so the the enormous amount of time spent on uh, on poor farming techniques uh, brings it up to an eight for me <laughs> a memorable moments. Well, here we go again. We got another uh, another women in prison. Um, I will remember. I will definitely remember the whole Edna climbing the tower and shooting the magical shotgun, because it's just the colors and the like insanity of that entire scene, which made no sense, um, was so over the top. I that part will stick with me. But the rest of it, for the most part, I mean, poor decisions and all, will just all blend together into the the melange of women in prison. So I will give this one a five. Um, I'm I'm going high, but it's it's for personal reasons. I was introduced to Wendy O. Williams from this film, not knowing she was anything else other than an actress, and the sheer commitment that she has to be. That scandally clad throughout the entire movie. And like, Usually when you have actresses willing to do this much nudity, you know, at some point they put on clothes. Not this movie. I, I will remember her. Also, there's a no spinning sign. And I can honestly say after watching both of these movies back to back, 
every prison movie, I'm going to be looking for a no spitting sign. <laughs> yeah, is that only a woman thing, or can you spit in men's prison but not women's prison? Or well, what's in the... this movie, it's no spitting on the floor. Oh, hmm. so you so can spit the on the ceiling. Movie, yes, yeah. uh, no splitting, spitting anywhere. This film, if you spit, you better hit somebody. Yeah, or spit on the wall. Hey, no spitting, yeah. but I spit on the wall. Then it's fine. Yeah. Then it's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, the problem is, it, 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 I think, I think, like it does totally run together with the last film that we did. Uh, for me, since I watched them at the same time, um, I, I remember the climbing Edna climbing the tower as well. That really does stick out with the colors and the shotgun and just how over the top she was. Like it totally sticks out for me. Um, and also. I remember this shower scene better than the shower scene because I thought the women were better looking. And uh, so for a gratuitous nudity film shower scene, uh, this one, I remember it better. So it's a little score there. Um, I'll, last time I gave it a three, I think. Uh, I'll give this a five. Five. I, Nick said spitting so many times I missed his actual score. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave it a Nick? seven for personal seven. reasons. <laughs> Although yeah. I would propose a test. Maybe we should just watch a couple more women in prison <laughs> films right now, and then we can come back for a quiz. Uh, <laughs> that seems pretty fair, actually. <laughs> I do not want a whole season of women in prison. <laughs> no, I, I have a... Uh, I have considered more than once a whole season of prison of uh, women in prison, and I thought that might be one of those ones that uh, they're not different enough to get. Them. I, I think that I mean, they would kill us. Plenty, but <laughs> <laughs> it may feel a bit too much the same. Uh, I think the I think the the weird tone of this movie will stick with me, and the, the campiness of some of the bits. Uh, there's some great dialogue, and there's a great relationship between uh, Edna and uh, Charlie, when they were Wilhelm's character. Uh, I, one of the other things I learned to go back to Jack's question is, is that if you misbehave at all without any paperwork or appeal, you can just double people's time in prison. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> true. true. They just they get threatened with that many times. I'm just going to double everybody's time. Uh, at one point, Edna says to uh, to Charlie, I'm gonna, your time is doubled. And Charlie says, so is your chin. <laughs> that, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, a terrific line. Uh, Actually, I and, have a question uh, about that. Aren't they just sentenced there till they're eighteen? You, you, you can say that, but then there's <laughs> Wendy O. Williams. So how do you compare her times being doubled up four times? Yeah, yeah four hundred yeah. times. You mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's she's twenty years past her expiration date in this movie. Do you think that she? Do you think that she knew it was a reform school, or she thought it was just a women in prison movie? I I think she was more concerned about it just latter. being a women in prison movie. Yeah, I suspect it's the latter that that because it, it. I mean, what's what's odd is that it's not terribly important that it's a reform school. <laughs> not at all. It, they, you could have easily called it, you know, prison. Girl, <laughs> you know, I, prison I, I'm girl. not sure I've ever been to reform school, but at one point in time, wouldn't in a reform school they be trying to reform people? Like, couldn't that effort be put in a little bit? I think they may have copyrighted the title before they, uh, you know, wrote <laughs> the script. Been. Yeah, it's, it's, it it was that era where you would uh, you would you would sell a movie to foreign uh, to uh, foreign markets off of a poster. Uh, which Before is great, actually, by the way. The, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And a, poster, a poster with Linnea Quigley that she's not in the yeah. movie. But hey, <laughs> that's amazing. It's but, really um, yeah. and, and see, actually, Jack, like one thing I will say is that when you talk about, when we talk about deletion bin Don Swayze, well, damn, maybe you should have gone to reform school because you would be very popular. <laughs> Uh, and that's coming from the Frank Stallone of our podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Also, we, at no point have we mentioned that Wendy Williams brands the people in her little uh, clique. Oh boy, yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. Forcefully brands with uh, th- this like little like it. It just looks like a like a like a car lighter. It's a circle 
uh, but they actually have a, like a bent wire to, to do this. And, uh, and, and, uh, my lovely wife, Lacey wandered in while, while they were doing the branding scene. And she said, like, why are they branding them? And I said, well, let me tell you about Nexium. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I did think that. It's exactly. got, it's got to see. <laughs> you, you, you can meet amazing people in this organization. All right, uh, seven for me. And our final category is called Crazy Concept. The craziest part of this concept is the simple fact that it's billed as a comedy and starts and ends like one and then completely <laughs> devolves in the middle. Um, the Reform School part is not, of course, not <laughs> not crazy in, in and of itself, but... Uh, but the poster is. Um, so I'm actually going to wind up giving this one a six because it's weird. Um, yeah, I don't think it's that weird other than the fact that it, they sort of went, let's put make a women in prison movie centered around Wendy L. Williams. That, that, that'll be like our seller. Um, yeah, uh, six. Wendy L. Williams, yeah. She wasn't that big a draw. <laughs> I don't think. She was most infamous no, for being but arrested. I, 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 I think that's what they meant. No, I know. I agree. So I'm agreeing with you on this. Um, yeah, like it's uh, it's a women in prison film, but they want to do a comedy, but they don't really lean into the comedy all the way, which to me, that is kind of crazy. So I will give it a five. Uh, that's where I ended up as well. Uh, so five for me. All right, uh, that brings us to the end of our scoring. Uh, this movie, uh, in in what became a double bill of <laughs> women in prison, <laughs> much to, <laughs> to our surprise, uh, this is the by far the better performer. Uh, and uh, our final total is uh, 65 out of 100. Uh, that ties it with American Shaolin and Game of Death 2 and Cabin Boy. Oh, We've really got a cluster score. of scores. <laughs> <laughs> when you're over, you had over a hundred of these, you can really start to cluster. But that's somehow. a pretty respectable score for this, all things considered. I think it's just so much different, like different in that when it is really over the top, it's really over the top, and I think that that was the what Chained Heat lacked. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Chained Heat was trying too much to be a serious movie that had exploitation elements. Whereas this movie is an exploitation movie that is, it kind of leans into it a little more. Well, it, it, this was an exploitation movie that was trying to be a comedy and largely was, and, and was just an exploitation movie though all the way through for sure. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it never left exploitation movie. It hit comedy a couple of times, but never left exploitation. Yeah. It, <laughs> if we uh, were judging on quality, I think it would score significantly worse than. Yes. Than it did. Yeah, yeah, I agree to- totally. Yeah, but that's not how we judge these. Nope, nope, uh, that's for uh, damn sure. We all I, I don't know if you know about our scoring, but we, uh, <laughs> we rate each <laughs> film in five categories. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Jim, <laughs> give us another prepackaged speech then, why don't you, <laughs> about, uh, about the, uh, the business. All right. Uh, we have launched a Patreon uh, called Film Showdown, and uh, uh, you can support what we're doing on the show, and uh, we're uh, we're looking to uh, create some exclusive content for that uh, at some time in the future, uh, but it'll keep the lights on in the meantime. And, so, uh, hey, they can tell us what they want. For, how about that? How about we say to them, go on to Instagram. You're going to tell them about the Instagram. Tell us what it is you want for exclusive content, and then give us $2. All we're asking for is $2. Yeah. <laughs> so, sounds good to me uh, two dollars uh, gets you all the exclusive on, content we are reachable on uh, instagram uh at uh cult film showdown and uh we are sponsored by we talk podcast.com home of the octagon where you can check out our whole record of now more than a hundred films that we have uh analyzed and scrutinized in our search for the ultimate b movie and uh uh, the, we talk podcasts has a Facebook and they have a Twitter and please subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast fix. And we uh, have a YouTube channel where we do that as well. We're all over the place. Yeah, we're so good. 
All right. Well, speaking of good... On the YouTube channel, tell us what, is, what we want on the Patreon, and then go give us $2. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Just give us $2. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm willing, like, if you want to give us $2 and just not tell us, that's yeah, also that's acceptable. That's that's also perfectly perfectly I don't feel the pressure to, to come up with like some ideas. I mean, we can do that part. Yeah. Yeah, the the only the only thing that if 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 anybody's going to feel pressure to do anything, giving us two dollars should be the uh, the yeah. part that they feel uh, pressure over. Yeah, that's some motivation. Yeah, that's I, right. I'm hung up on the fact that you said we scrutinize these films. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought we were just walking through the same room as they were playing. <laughs> oh, not a glory hole for seeing them in. I'm pretty. I, love, I do like to imagine that Nick's house just has movies like this playing at all times, and he's just like, "Oh, hey, what's happening? In, what's happening here in the living room?" Yeah. Dude, he's just been running and play next movie for yeah, like the, three, or, three or four weeks. Yeah, the kitchen has a TV, the bedroom has a TV, the hallway has a TV, the bathroom. It's just every one of them playing different things. It's just, you, you just catch something, and it's just like, "Oh, okay, so reform school girls today." That. that that we finally isolated what Nick means by the rotation. He yes. means the, the rooms of his house. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Sibilance carries on we'll next see. time with the tomb. The tomb. And, yeah. Okay. I don't have anything else to you. <laughs> the tomb. Yeah. The tomb. I just like saying the tomb. I really, I, we need Christopher Lee to come in and say the tomb. You know? <laughs> That would be quite a trick. <laughs> yeah, yes, it would be. Is he on cameo? It, yeah, it, I, I'm willing to bet at some point Christopher Lee has said the tomb somewhere, but uh, I'm not going looking for it. Somebody else can do that. <laughs> Nick, if, if in your rotation you find that, let me know. Working on it. Okay. All right. <laughs> He's not lying, folks. No. Okay, so... For Jim, and for Jack, and for Nick, I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu, and thanks for listening to the Cult Film Showdown! For the next 90 seconds, while this preview of coming attractions is playing, will all filmgoers with any degree of wit, taste, and intelligence please keep your critical remarks to yourselves, or we'll nail your tongues to the floor. Thank you. Why do young girls misbehave? Is punishment the answer? Welcome to our country club, ladies. This is the last stop on your tour. Here they are, the loveliest girls in the history of socially conscious cinema. Reform School Girls. My name's Edna. Some of the girls call me Eddie. I like that. Some are innocent, but not for long. Some refuse to be degraded for about 10 seconds. Your time is doubled. So is your chin. They come from all walks of life <laughs> just to get stepped on. <laughs> time flies when you have fun. See the lyrical shower scene. Reflect on the dramatic kitty stomp. Think about the spectacular hose down. This is the motion picture they said couldn't be made. Reform School Girls, starring Wendy O. Williams. Yo, wankers! Pat Ast. Bring me something to wipe my shoe. Linda Carroll. Kill you, murder! And Sybil Danning as Warden Sutter. You'll treasure the heroic saga of young ladies and their struggle for respect, decency, and a warm place to take a shower. So young, so bad, so what? Reform school girls. <laughs>